Well, Mehmet Olchu is the chairman of the London Energy Club. He joins us now live from our London studio. Thanks so much for speaking to us. We know Qatar, who just resigned from OPEC, was not a major player within the organization, but it just doesn't have the oil, but still it can cause some embarrassment and some complications for Saudi, especially with this timed withdrawal just before this meeting. How do you think this meeting will proceed, and how is OPEC going to fare in, in light of this resignation? Well, I think withdrawal of Qatar, as you said, is not going to make any significant impact on OPEC because it's a marginal producer of around 600,000 barrels per day. But don't forget that Qatar is the largest LNG exporter in the world. So in a statement, Qatari minister said, we are going to focus on more uh, gas than oil. And, but it signals that there is a serious split within OPEC because after Saudi Arabia gang up with, uh, in quotation marks, with uh, Russia uh, to cut back the oil output in order to bolster the prices. And the countries like Qatar, Kuwait, have been marginalized in OPEC bureaucracy and decision-making process. That's one reason. The other reason, of course, being that within the, within the OPEC, uh, there is a widening split uh, because U.S. now is emerging as the largest producer, 11.7 million barrels per day, more than Saudi Arabia and uh, Russia. And the, if the oil prices stay the level it is, this is not a good news for the producers. By bolstering the prices, Saudi Arabia especially wants to bring the prices minimum to $70 per barrel from current $62. But, you know, we, we, we saw already the oil prices at $86 uh, in early October. So this is going to be too high, but in between, like uh, 69, 70, will be the price that Russia and uh, Saudi Arabia are uh, targeting. If it goes even further, that's a wrong signal to OPEC countries as well. It's not a good news, because then the U.S. shale producers will be encouraged to produce even more, and this is going to crush the prices. So there has to be the right balance, and I think this is what they are going to discuss today. In my opinion, <coughs> OPEC ministers will take a decision today to reduce the output by about one million barrels minimum. It okay. might be a little bit higher as well. But they will defy the Trump's call uh, to keep production going. Okay. So they do still, uh, OPEC is still relevant enough. They control more or less the price of oil. but. Let's talk a little bit about natural gas. I mean, Qatar is the world's leading exporter of natural gas. How much more important a commodity is that becoming on the global market today? Is there any chance that it could actually uh, replace oil, in a sense, as um, one of the world's leading commodities? Well, because of the technological breakthroughs in electrical cars especially, the use of uh, oil in a uh, car will be reduced significantly over the next 20, 30 years. But oil is with us to stay in foreseeable future. Whereas natural gas, we thought that in the beginning it was a transition fuel from oil to greener energy, but now it's becoming a permanent uh, mainstay of the world economic system. And uh, the main dynamic in the natural gas market is the increasing role of LNG liquefied natural gas over pipeline gas coming from Russia basically and in my opinion uh, Qatar will not be able to sustain its leadership position as a leading exporter of LNG because Australia is coming there are about nine trains being built in Australia that will export to all over markets it's going to be number one US is coming also in a strong way through shale gas they will also be a major exporter of LNG. Then you have uh, Tanzania, you have Angola, Mozambique, and Indonesia, so many new countries coming to the market. So this is not going to be a good news in terms of prices. Right. Because oversupply or supply glut will bring the prices down. There will be more supply of gas. So there will be competition also between oil and gas. Therefore, the role of OPEC already transforming itself with Russia being a strong partner smaller members like Kuwait, Venezuela, Libya are feeling quite disturbed and Venezuela is almost outside the picture because of the fragility of its economy and political system. 
Iran sanctions, and because this is one of the largest producers, will make life a bit more difficult in terms of supply. So I think over the next year, we are going to see very serious split dynamics and uh, also confusion in the oil and gas markets. Okay. However, the prices will remain, in my opinion, between 60 to $70 per barrel for the next six months. Okay. Mehmet Solju, thank you so much uh, for sharing your insights there from London.